Welcome to the, the wonderful world of Karina, AKA also known as Auntie Karina from my 30 years of working with kids and specifically for over 15 years of running my own licensed family daycare in my home. Now, for those of you that don't know, licensed family daycare allows you to have seven children under the age of seven in your care, 12 hours a day, all by your lonesome. So if you think I'm a little bit odd, there's a reason because only us that are certifiable can actually do daycare for that many hours a day and sort of stay sane. So I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me into this group. What a treat and an absolute delight to be able to do this. I've been so lucky that your fabulous, fabulous and amazing, um, I guess we'll call it admin, has allowed me the privilege of going and becoming, you know, this coming in here and doing all this. So Danielle, I want to send a specific shout out to you for allowing me to be here. So I want to say this is going to be a bit of a longer live uh, for those of you that are going to be hopping on or want to hit the replay. Please do, do let me know if you're live or replay. I will answer all of your questions, hopefully while we're running. And if not, do not be shy. I want to insist that you write them in the comments. Why? Because I will actually answer them. It's something that I think is really important. Um, these are just my cheater glasses. I don't really need them. So I don't have a script. This is how I fly. This is how I work. I got everything in this, what I call old fashioned, for those of you that know, a Rolodex in my brain of stuff that I just constantly am pulling from. So I like to run my lives and my classes with a basic outline, which is sort of like how I work with my clients, which it is. I give them a basic outline and then we build it from there. So specific for this group, for Sprout Mompreneurs, Danielle has done a beautiful job of creating this really amazing space. And I wanted to, when I applied to be in her group, I basically did said to her, I wanna be here to help support your group and your moms in here as much as possible. And she thought that was so interesting that she sent me a message saying, uh, I want you to go live in this group because one of the reasons I do what I do and what makes what I do so different than any other parenting co coach or any other coach you're ever gonna meet is number one, I'm slightly off my rocker, which is awesome. I've been a mom and I've been a mompreneur before that was even a word. I raised my kids and I ran my daycare so that I could stay home and raise my children myself. I didn't want somebody else to raise them. Why? Because I thought if they turned out to be hooligans, I wanted to be my fault. If that's not something you can do, please, there is no judgment here. This is just what I did. And trust me, there were enormous sacrifices, just like there are if you go out to work or whether you work at home. So having said that, I am a born kid whisperer and I have been involved and magically connected to children since forever. And I, if you ask anybody that has ever been with me, I have the oddest things happen. Kids will just come up to me. They'll start telling me all their little secrets. Uh, people will just show up and tell me things that are like deep dark secrets. I'm like, what? So it's really easy to talk to me. And I find that being able to connect with people on a really kind of a deep energetic level, as well as just on a good old fashioned this makes sense to me. So this is what I think should do level. Just makes me really, really in tune with the people I work with and with the moms that are in my group. Now, what I do is I teach you how to use what I call my three pillars of parenting. So let's just do a little bit of a step back in time here. And I will try not to, to uh, you know, yabber your ear off. So do make sure when you guys hop on that you say who you are. Tell me what kind of, you know, how the, how many kids you have and do tell me what kind of business you're in because I'm really interested. So what brought me to kind of doing all this was that I was doing an MLM after I hit my head and I ended up with what are called hemiplegic migraines, which are a really rare form of migraines. So I went from working in my mobile blind business, you know, 50 hours a week. I was dance, belly dancing, you know, six, eight hours a week. I was running my house. I had a uh, partner, all these things. And I ended up flat on the couch where making a cup of tea took me an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to recover from. So I had to make some serious changes. So what I did is I started in a wonderful group uh, called Unique and it was skincare and makeup. And I learned so much. And I thought I'm going to make a ton of money doing this because I'm just kind of built to be an entrepreneur. But what ended up happening is that 
more moms were talking to me about their kids than mascara. So, and then when you add in the fact that I've been a doula, I've been a special education assistant, I was, I worked with autistic adolescents back when they had work experience in grade 12. So that was a long time ago for me. They hired me after day four, which they had never done before. And I worked there for six years. I ran the entire facility. They were like, I think, oh gosh, memory is getting a little foggy <laughs> as the years accumulate. And I was actually in charge of the entire staff and all the kids and their medication and making sure the meals got done at the age of 19. So it's just something that I've just naturally done. And then when I worked in the school system, I worked with kids that really struggled with math. Now, what's really interesting is I'm, I have a math disability. So I was able to really connect with these kids and see how their brains work and was able to teach them. And they all went from like D's to, to C pluses and B's. It was amazing, so proud of them. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. And then I eventually got married and I wanted to have children and baby Lust got the best of me. And after working in the school system for a year, I went and had my sons. I have two, they are grown, they're 28 and 29 and they're fabulous. And they are really amazing kids. And they were the big reason this, why I went into daycare. And having done that, when you're working in daycare, one of the big no-nos is you can't swat them on the diaper. So, and you cannot yell at them and you have to be positive. And it turns out that that was a perfect fit for me. And it really pushed me to learning so much about kids because basically I find their brains fascinating. So instead of becoming a child psychologist, which if I could do my life over again, which please once was enough, I would probably become a child psychologist or maybe do this earlier, who knows? The point being is that parents started coming to me going, how do you get all these kids to be seven children to basically, they're not killing each other. They're not screaming. They're not fighting. They're not like chewing on each other. They're not like running amok. And I'm like, well, really, I just have to be absolutely clear and keep everything on a tight rein so that they know exactly what will happen. They knew with 100% certainty that no matter what choice they made, there was a, there was a result. They chose to eat. They <laughs> they weren't hungry. They chose to play their games. They nicely, they got to keep playing. It was really simple stuff. And that's sort of where things started to come together. When I was in college, one of the classes I took in uh, one of the psychology classes, which by the way, I find fascinating, which is, see how it all ties together. There was a study that was done and this is where my parenting philosophy took root. This is before I even had children, before I was even thinking of having kids. There was a study done where these psychologists and counselors and psychiatrists all came together and decided to look at these kids that were playing in a playground. And what they did was they saw this big fence and all these kids running around and playing. They were pushing against the fence and they were running and screaming and yelling. And they thought they don't have enough room. We should give them more room. So they took the fence down and came back. And what they expected to see were the kids going crazy. But what they found was the exact opposite. The kids were huddled in the center. They were quiet, they were unsure, they were uncertain. They, all that wonderful, joyous sound that you hear when your kids are playing outside at recess or lunchtime at school was gone. I did one of these aha moments that has stuck with me for 30 years and was really the pivotal point in me really understanding and clicking that kids are desperate boundaries when we give them these fences for them to live in they can run and jump and check them out and press against them and see how they feel but they can be these wonderful exploring you know testing things out individuals and really grow into the kids that they can be because they have these boundaries now when i say boundaries boundaries are really really firm but like a chain link fence they have some flex right so it's not about being rigid. So when I talk about my boundaries, they are not rigid dictatorial. They are not where you must do this or this is gonna happen, this is not. This is where you lead your children, much like you as an entrepreneur, give your clients the boundaries, you give them the contract, right? You tell them the expectations, you give them you know, what's gonna happen and what the results will be, right? So it's the same thing with parenting. So the way you treat your clients is kind of what you wanna do with your kids. And the reason I say that is that when kids know exactly what's going on, they relax. I had a licensing officer come over one time, and this is kind of fun. And she was there and they used to stay for like hours. It really messed up the kids' schedule, so annoying. But 
what you had to do. And my mom was over for a cup of coffee, which they weren't too thrilled about, but you know what? You need some adult contact during the day. And what happened was is that the kids were doing something and I just kind of looked at them. And my mom said to them, she can rule this room with an eyebrow. What does that mean? What that means is that I would catch something that the kids were starting because I'd set all these boundaries and because I was so in tune with them that I could just look at them and go, all I had to do. And they knew, Ooh. these kids would call me on vacation. They were in Disneyland. They call me, they'd send me little notes. These kids are still in touch with me today. So this really firm, clear, loving boundary setting will get you that kind of result. They'll get you where you're not only getting through this connection with your kids, you'll understand them better. You'll have less chaos, less fuss, less muss, and life gets really easy. So let's kind of dive into the next part of this. So let's talk about the pillars. So when I talked to you about how I had that aha moment with those, that psychology class where we really, I started to understand how important boundary setting was. And, you know, you see yourself as part of our development as uh, entrepreneurs, as we talk about mindset, we talk about, you know, our viewpoints or our attitudes or how we're going to uh, look at things, how we're going to reframe. So this is some of the stuff that you're going to be doing when you work with me. And I get this with my clients. It's about looking at things with different eyes. So hang on, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where was I going with this? Uh, 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 backtrack. Somebody help me, but that's okay. I'll get onto it. What was I doing? Do you remember Robert? No, he didn't hear what I was saying. My husband's here. So, okay. So when you are setting all these things up, oh shoot, that's really annoying when that happens. Hey, hemiplegic migraine brain. Yeah, it's gone. So let's just move on. So when you start learning how to do these things, the way you set the boundaries, oh yeah, mindset. So we start to actually have to learn to set the boundaries with our clients. There we go. Now I got it. Just took a minute. See, told you, on the fly, always. So when you start setting boundaries with your clients, they pay you on time, they show up to their lives on time, you know, you get that respect, you get this great working relationship. Well, it works identical with your children. Slightly different, but it's the exact same principle. Principle is when your kids know exactly what's expected of them, they don't have to get freaked out. So the bigger the behaviors, a lot of times when kids are really out of control, you see these kids that are just going nuts. You've seen them on the nanny 911 or the super nanny. So super nanny Joe comes in and sets down these boundaries. And all of a sudden the kids are like, yes, mom, um, may I please? They're, the fighting goes down. Kids that are the most out of control are often, and I'm going to say significantly often, are the ones that don't have really clear boundaries. So let's talk about my three pillars starting number one i always talk about behavior now behavior i teach and when I, I teach in my classes when i do go live every week but i also teach to my clients we talk about behavior now so often you may see a kid throw something you're thinking oh they're just being you know little rotters they're they're not listening i've tried everything like they just don't hear me but but, but. well you know what all the above is true what the behavior is isn't necessarily that they're throwing it's what's kind of gotten them to throwing or for example they're having a tantrum now is are they having a tantrum or are they having a meltdown i want you to look at i teach you to look at what the behavior appears to be and then i teach you the psychology to kind of look at what's behind it for example my favorite and it's the easiest because we've all experienced it the the tantrum leaving a playgroup or a tantrum in the middle of shopping. Same thing, same sort of idea, the tantrum. So a lot of people would look at them, like, remember the feeling? They look at you like, they're looking at you and they're looking at your kid thinking, there's a kid whose mom hasn't got it together, right? Because their mom's just letting them. Well, you know what? What they don't know and what you may not always recognize is maybe that tantrum has a reason. Maybe it's not them just being a whiny, like spoiled little toad. Maybe it's almost lunchtime. Maybe it's almost nap time. Maybe you've been there so long that they're like losing their mind. Maybe they're feeling completely ignored. Maybe they are just not feeling well. Maybe, right? 
So you see, there's a list that you can go through as a mom, instead of just looking at that and then grabbing them by the arm and dragging them out and feeling really embarrassed, which we've done, okay? If you have given your kid a swat in public or dragged them out like a sack of potatoes under your arm while they're screaming, there is no judgment, none, because we don't know what to do. It's something that I firmly believe that parenting is a skill that takes time to learn, and I'm the one that's going to give you the shortcut to it. Unfortunately, we are just handed these little bundles of joy with washing instructions that they say, try not to ruin it. Here you go. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. We have to learn how to operate a car, which is a lethal weapon, to try not to kill people, yet we're handed these live beings, say, figure it out. Okay? So, rolling back, I want you to look at the behavior. You look at what it is. So, we're going to look at the tantrum. Okay, they're losing their schnizzle. Why? Now, at first, it takes time. It's like any skill. You know, when you're first learning how to use your live, it took forever, kind of like where I had my life, and then the whole thing vanished, and I had to redo this whole thing, hence why I'm late. But you're looking at that behavior for what it, not at face value. Sure, sometimes they're just being little toads. Happens. But you're going to know the difference between them being toads and them being, okay, this is just too much. There's too many lights. There's too many people. There's just too much. It's too long. There's no, they don't know what's happening. It, it's sort of this time for kids just stretches into these abyss of, I don't know when it's ending. So when you have that, kids can react. And do you blame them? They don't know what's happening next. They don't know what's in your mind of, oh, I got to get this, 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 because then we got to get in the car. We've got 20 minutes. Then we got to go pick up their big sister from school. And then we got dance. And then we got soccer. And then we got dip. They don't know that. All they see is them moving in this space of time and their little brains have exploded and they are, they don't have the words. They can't say, I'm frustrated. I'm feeling tired. This is overwhelming. I'd like my lunch and my nap, please. They haven't got those words. So they will react how they will tell you with their bodies. So when your kids do do that sort of thing, I want you to stop and take a few minutes to think and go, hmm, are they? What's this really saying? And I know that's really hard to do, okay? Because I've been there, so I've got a story for you. This is sort of one of those looking back, especially again, you know, I told you about my first aha moment for parenting. This is where my second one really hit, kind of had been percolating in my brain. My two-year-old son, I had a wee little one strapped on me in a over-the-shoulder baby holder, literally, that's what it's called, best sling ever. And he threw himself on the ground and had a meltdown. And I was in line and another mom said to me, I don't remember the identical, the, the exact words, but basically it look at you like you need to like just give your kid what he wants. And I just turned to her and I said, you're going to thank me when, because I'm going to discipline my child, meaning to guide, to teach, so that when he's a grown up, he's not climbing into your daughter's window doing stuff he ought not to be doing. The language was a little bit bluer than that, but you get the point. I decided right then and there that my child wasn't, behavior was not going to dictate how I was going to react. I stayed very calm. I crouched down with him and I just, I was fuming at this lady. I thought, how dare you tell me that I should give in to my child? If I give in to him at two, what's he going to do at 18, 16, up against the wall, give me the bleeping car keys? I don't think so. Not going to happen. Number one, they only make it up to my hip. He's not going to be the boss of me. Number two, he hasn't been alive long enough to boss my ass around. So, pardon that, but that's the deal. So when you start recognizing and you take your emotion out of reacting to your kid's tantrum or whatever, then you can actually start being proactive, which leads me into sort of my second pillar of my parenting philosophy. So we've done the behavior, what it is and what isn't, removing the emotion from it with yes is very hard to do, but starting to look at it with more analytical business-like eyes right? Makes sense. When you take the emotion out of it, you don't get sucked in, right? And your kid will appreciate it. We're going to talk about the communication. When you are working with your clients, if you give them a whole bunch of legal jargon, they're going to probably look at you like, you know that look on your kid's face when you natter at them and they kind of go, and then everything glazes over? Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing with your kids as with your clients. When you 
give them language or you give them a dump load of information that is way beyond their understanding or capability, you get the look, okay? So we can fix that. When you have your clients, you may have a contract, you may go over it, you'll uh, correct anything that, or uh, explain anything that is in there. It's the same thing with your kids. So when you're communicating with your kids, you have to be very, very, very clear. Okay, you know the K-I-S-S -S principle? Keep it simple, silly. You know that one. You need to make sure that when you are with your kids, especially when they're very young, I'm talking the four and under set, which is really what I worked with for most of my 15 years, you have to keep the language very clear. It has to be simple because their little brains, shoot, it's gone. All they hear is this, wah, 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 in their ears. So when you're communicating with your kids, keep it clear, keep it simple. Use as few words as possible. You may say, tidy up time. So think of, the, here's the difference between, you know, giving the verbal diarrhea and giving them the words they need. Okay, you guys, you need to clean up your toys. And I want you to put the toys in the toy box and I want the cars in the car box. And then I want you to go wash your hands because once we get everything cleaned up, we're gonna have lunch and then we're gonna go outside. Ooh. Talk about information overload for your kids. How about this? It's tidy up time. Joey, cars in the car bucket, please. Mary, can you put the dolls in the doll bucket? Oh, that was really stereotypical. But you get the you get the premise. Hey, okay? how about Joey? Put the dolls in the doll bucket. Mary, put the cars in the car bucket. Good job. The difference between nattering at your kids where they are not going to get the information and them getting the information in a clear, short, understandable way, night and day. It's going to take your needing to repeat yourself like a broken record, for those of you that know what a record is. It's going to stop that because your kids are going to be, have clear language. They're going to hear you, see you, follow through. It's like when you work with your clients, you want them to see you, hear you, and follow through. Same premise. Okay. All right. We are 20 minutes in. Please feel free to write down any of your questions. I want to just have a little stop here for a moment uh, so that I can give you folks my undivided attention just to check and see if there's any questions, any concerns. So we've talked about the two basic pillars of parenting. Now there's a few steps that go within the, especially the communication part. That's something that I can't give you everything here. I'm gonna give you lots so that you're gonna make, so be able to use them right away and make some changes with your parenting that are gonna ultimately give you more time and space with your kids. But I'll explain more about that at the end, uh, closer to the end. Hold that thought. I warned you guys, my poor mama, <clears throat> She had to deal with me be having diarrhea of the mouth. And bless her heart, I did not completely drive her to drink, but it has come in handy, so here we are. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So here's the thing. When you've got your communication with your kids, your communication is not only about what you want them to do. Your communication also helps to teach your children to start recognizing the various emotions and feelings they're having. You teach them. It's like when you teach your clients a, a specific strategy to be able to, let's say, identify pain points. We don't always know what they are until somebody shows us. So it's the same thing with children. When your child is becoming frustrated or rubbing their eyes, telling your child, oh, you're look, you know, you're you're looking tired, rubbing your eyes. They can start to identify. When they start getting the wiggles, oh, you look, your body looks like you're getting tired of sitting. Do we need to have some outside time? You can start identifying very simply and very clearly with your child so that as they grow, they will begin to understand what the emotions are, which really is a benefit to them because when your kids can identify their feelings and have names for them, they can better learn to uh, find the coping skill they need at that point in time. Now, my niece is uh, 13. She's got sensory processing disorder. And she has, my brother is a single dad, and we've been highly involved with her forever. When we first started, um, you know, working with her and being able to be involved in the family, she would lose it. She has a little bit sort of the slight autistic tendencies, but she was 
sensory sensitive. She would lose her mind. She couldn't identify her feelings and her frustrations. And we started with that really clear communication. I'd say to her, Ari, I said, your body looks really mad the way it's hitting. You're hitting the floor. Ari, you're wrapping yourself in that looks like you need to have a cuddle to help control your body. I would really identify clearly what it was that were bugging her. And now at 13, and this is, we didn't start seeing her really till she was about six, seven. She can identify what's going on. She'll say, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. There's too much. I need to have some quiet space. Okay, this child can now identify, articulate, and navigate her way through her own sensory issues independently. And there's times that she doesn't do great with it, but she'll come back and say, I'm sorry for, and then she'll explain what it is. I didn't, and then she'll tell us what it is she could have done. And then she apologized for taking it on us. So when you start when they're really really small it makes it so much easier later and it's like when you're working with your clients when you set things up well when you first start with them you don't have to work 10 times harder later to get them back on track it's the same thing with kids small kids small problems big kids big problems so we don't want to do that because when they're small it's easier to make them stay in time out but that's a whole different thing so we've talked about behavior when we look at it in a proactive way and we look at it more of a clear eyes, unemotional, doesn't mean we're not emotionally invested, but when we take that ah, ah, feeling out, we can look at for what it really is, and what it's telling us that our kids can't say. With our communication, like we work with our clients, we identify what the problems are, we give them the words and the solutions, and then they get the result, right? Same thing with my pillars, we identify the problem, you get, the, you get the words they need in the wording and you figure it all out, right? So you've got your communication, which is clear and simple, step by step, because when they're small, if you give them six steps, they're gonna hear this. They don't hear you, okay? Truly, truly children are deaf. When they play, they literally are in a different world. So when you are yelling at your kids, which I call long distance parenting, they don't hear you. It's ineffective. It just makes you, annoyed and you can't parent as i call that long distance parenting is a verb in my world which is an action so parenting means you have to get up you have to go over there you have to get their attention you have to give them the words okay so just think of it this way the more you have to get up and go and deal with your kid like just to interact with your kids just figure it's just all those steps you get for your little step count so winner winner right you get kids that actually listen to you and you get steps in for the day so i'd say that's pretty cool so let's go into the last part of my three pillars, and that is consequences. I know, calm your beans. I know somebody out there is gonna have a hissy fit, so just cool your jets for a second. For me, consequences are either natural or they are logical. And I talk about disciplining children. Now for me, that is never punitive. It is never angry. and well, anger happens occasionally, but it's not nasty and mean. It is a guiding and teaching opportunity, okay? When you discipline your children, you are guiding and teaching them. For those of you that are, um, you know, have faith, that's why they had, you know, Jesus and his 12 disciples disciple, right? They are learning. You are the leader. You are the parent, okay? That's how it rolls. So natural logical consequences are what I base all of my parenting on. When I worked with all these kids, and there was about, actually I counted, there are 83 registered that I worked with, way more that kind of went in and out, including friends, but I did the same three principles every single time. And my consequences, I'm a lazy parent, meaning I want to do it once to be done. I'm a lazy person. I want things done so efficiently. I can go sit on the couch and relax. Same thing with parenting. I like natural consequences. You don't have to do a thing. They are so easy. Kids learn themselves. Don't eat your breakfast, you're hungry. Oh my gosh, what a consequence. Children will not starve to death between breakfast and snack time. They may choose, they may not want to wear their boots. Instead of having a huge fight, who hasn't done this, to stuff the rubber boots on those flailing little feet and then they curl up their toes and then they bend their feet, you kick, jam them in. Let them wear a pair of runners. What's going to happen? They're going to get wet feet. Maybe next time, the natural concert, it's natural. They'll have wet feet and you'll go, well, you chose your runners. Maybe next time you might want to wear your rubber boots. Next time that you go, 
remember you had wet feet last time? Oh yeah, put the boots on. Talk about easy parenting. Why work so hard, right? It's like when you work with your clients, you wanna let them learn naturally so that they get all the aha moments. They're doing the work, you're just guiding them. Same thing, you're discipling them. The other thing that I find is super effective is um, when we use logical consequences. Now, logical consequences must make absolute sense to the behavior that is exhibited, to the choice. So if your child uh, throws a toy, telling them that they aren't gonna get toys for the rest of the month is dumb. Your kids are gonna look at you like you're full of bologna sandwiches because they know you're full of crap. They're not gonna listen to you. You've lost more respect. You look silly and you know you're not gonna follow through. So why work that hard? Kid throws a toy, the logical consequence is you give a warning. The logical part is if you throw the toy again, the toy's going away. Whoop, threw it again, mm, bad choice. Toy goes away, don't say anything, you walk away. They have a temper tantrum. You chose to throw the toy. Not easy. So much easier when we parent the way I'm teaching you. The way I teach every parent that I work with, every mom. Okay, I have a mom that I just finished working with. Her children were literally, and I quote, feral. They would be up until midnight. They'd wake up in the middle of the night. Now they are five and eight. They would color on the walls. They would like destroy things. This mom was just beside herself. And she's a mom. She's a business mom. And she went where she was just like, for example, the bedtime thing. She goes, she was given the melatonin. So when she started working and doing the things that the behavior, the clear language and the natural and logical consequences, she no longer has melatonin. She no longer has the kids up all night. They go to bed pretty happily and they stay there. She says it was such a difference when she had the steps of what to do. You know, the business coach that you had that worked with you and all of a sudden laid it out, you do A, you do B, you do C, and you went, oh my God, why couldn't I see that? It's the same thing with parenting. Because parenting is learned, I don't care what anybody says, it's a skill. And back in the day, we used to have this big community and everybody would be together. Well, we don't have that. Families are, an, you know, an ocean apart. We can't visit each other. Our grandparents aren't there to help model for us. We don't see other parents. We aren't connected the way we used to. And to be blunt, half the stuff that's out there in parenting is so fluffy. I used to call, I call it cotton candy parenting. It's so fluff and stuff, so difficult and so inane that it just burns my butt because they make it so complicated. And you've got these kids that just run amok. You know, the kid in the store or the kid that's at the playground that is running loose and you kind of go, mm -hmm. Okay, that's the kind of parenting that's going out there. And I don't want that for you because it is way too much work. So stop working so hard. You teach your, your clients not to work so hard in their business. I teach you not to work so hard at your parenting. So it's easy. Listen, you're still going to have days where you're going to be like, is at, at, you know, the kids are up at seven and by eight in the morning, you're wondering when bedtime is. Okay, it's, that's life. But I'm gonna keep you from having to cry in the shower. I'm gonna keep you from having to feel like you gotta go into the closet and scream by doing these things. So let's talk a little bit more about logical consequences. Logical consequences are what you, the parent, logically set that connects to the behavior. Like I was just telling you, if a kid throws, you warn them. If you throw your toy again, the toy has to go away because the toy doesn't like being thrown. Toy throws, goes away. For example, if you have older children, they don't wanna do their chores, Oh, okay. So the logical or the logical thing would be that you don't get to go and do the next thing that you wanted to do. You didn't want to take the garbage out. Okay. But you're not going outside to play. You're not going to get the Xbox. Can't go and, you know, do your art. Can't. Hmm? Welcome to logic. So much simpler for you. So much easier. Your kids will get it. If you say to your kids, you don't take out the garbage, I'm taking away your, your um, you know, screen for a month. Again, where's the connection with that? It makes no sense. So when I hear parents yelling at their kids, which I do, and I understand, and my heart is like, I get it, been there. Here's my card. When you stop making these empty threats, because your kids call bologna sandwiches on you. When you start being clear, 
when you start setting the expectations, when you set out the consequence that is logical and makes sense or natural, and it makes sense, it's connected to the behavior. We don't turn in our assignments in time for our bosses or get our bills paid on time. We have a consequence. It's, it's a logical one. It, it, they, the, the company will ding us. We'll lose our job. So let's teach our kids these steps that they're going to need as adults. Because you're really not raising children. You're raising adults. Okay, take a moment here. Whew, it's a lot that I'm giving you. I understand. Please feel free to run this over again. There's a ton of information. This is one of uh, the talks that I do that is the most in-depth. It's intense. It's how I work with my moms. Very intense. Very connected. Ton of energy. Really involved in what you're doing, really connected. Now, well, the things that you may or not know is that when my clients work with me, when my moms, they get me 11 hours a day. They've got me on a boxer where they can just talk to me all day long. I've had moms literally just hold the walkie talkie crying. It's okay. I've been there. I know what it's like to feel completely overwhelmed and suffocated by your family and the, the pressures that you have of trying to, you know, balance the budget, get all the kids' needs. Everything's going to hell on the handbasket, pardon my French, uh, and you are just done. So I get it. So really, there is nothing that you can't tell me that I have not A, experienced or B, seen. B, seen. Get it? All right. Give you guys a moment. Write down your questions. I'm just going to have a little bit of a sip of water because, again, I like to talk. That cheeky sound you heard was my husband. Just slam. All right. So the things that I like to do is, you know, I have my, this program that I set up. It's a taste tester and it's only for a week and you're going to get a ton of stuff. So this is how my, my clients get the results. Number one, I tell you exactly what you can expect. So I I uh, tell you what's going to happen. I explain the actual format of how it's going to go. And I tell you the results you can get if you do what you're told. <laughs> because sometimes you just got to do what I say. Don't ask. Just do it. Remember, you ever have that with your kids? They why? Because I said so. And it's okay to say that. Because sometimes they just need to do it. Sometimes we don't need to negotiate. But again, when you start really understanding and really integrating these three pillars of parenting, you're going to be able to know when you can negotiate or open up a discussion and when it just needs to be, no, this is just what's happening. And your kids will be far more compliant, far more relaxed about the times that, because you're not going to need to do it often, say, no, this is it. Because they have so many more times that they really can be an active part of the decision making. And that's amazing. It's easy. It's simple, it takes all the fight out of it because when they do blow their cork, should they choose to, you can say, but I didn't choose, you chose that. You, and then they get mad because they can't get mad at you. They gotta get mad at themselves for making that choice, which teaches them in a safe, loving area. It goes back to that whole thing of the fence with the psychologist. When you build your kids a strong, firm, but slight flexible, loving fence, they grow. And you adjust that fence as they need. So it's never rigid. It's always flexible, but it's always consistent. Okay. We all good with that. We're good. Okay. So if you do decide to work with me, which I do not know why you would not, because when you work with me, people are always asking me like, how is that going to help my business? Let me tell you how this works with your business. When you parent more efficiently, your kids aren't like one client had, literally the children were painting the dog, climbing in the cupboards and getting into stuff. You're not having to hit the mute on your Zoom because you're constantly at your kids. When your kids have these really clear boundaries, you're actually able to work more efficiently because you're able to tell them, especially with some of the, the signature programs that are signature systems I have, where they know when and when they can't get come and get you, you work more efficiently, which means you're not constantly got your brain halfway off into, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. You're actually able to get those things done and you can say to kids, mom needs five minutes and then we can ABC one, two, three. They're like, cool mom, okay, let's go. You actually can be more present with your kids. I mean, that's the reason you're working at home, right? Not to be screaming at your kids while you hit mute, not to be wondering what the heck they're up to, not to hear yet again, she's breathing on me, 
or yet another argument going on. When you parent efficiently and effectively, you have more time because you're not constantly after them. Your household energy just becomes so calm. Everybody flows. It's like this wonderful sense of rhythm and security and love. And yeah, you might have ruffled feathers from time to time, but they're easily smooth because the kids know what to expect. They know that when you're on a Zoom, they won't be bothering you because they know mommy's working. This is mom work time. But we know because mommy is able to work really well that she's going to be able to really give her us our attention. After we don't have to keep bugging her. Is this clicking with you? This makes sense, right? Okay, if it makes sense, I want you to write down, I got it. You get a week of my attention, 11 hours a day. You're gonna get this really in-depth and a little bit personal questionnaire so that I know exactly where you're coming from because I know how to read between the lines. It's just what I do. It's part of that gift I've got being a kid whisperer and being you know, a very intuitive being. You're going to get some of my signature systems. You're gonna get my releasing mom guilt video series because who in the frank needs that shizzles? Mom guilt, dumbest thing ever created in our own brains, okay? You're gonna get all of that and you're gonna have messaging access to me for 11 hours a day and here's the gig, it's only $197 US, that's it. Do you know of any other, co other coaches that give you that much? No, and the reason why I can do this is because I've been a mom and I've been an entrepreneur. I've juggled both. I've had a couple of businesses. I made pet pillows for a pet store. I had two young kids, young, young, like four and five. And I sewed 180 of these pillows of a variety of size, sizes. There was two pillows, there was a cover, and I sewed them by myself while my kids were up. Was it easy? No. Did I sometimes get help? Yes. Was I able to do it successfully without being completely gone from my kids and having to work till two in the morning or be up at five in the morning? Yes. Why? Because I use these principles. When you use that with your kids, it also allows you to use it with your clients. And trust me, it works on hobby too. Okay. I want to make sure I leave you time. I, I, I could go on and on and on. And, uh, I've been given the option to talk for an hour, but honestly, I think this is more than enough. Uh, you, all I'm, you're going to hear is wah, wah, wah. So please go back, take a look at the replay, make yourself some notes, try this stuff out because it works. Works like a hot damn, works every single time. And the reason why uh, a lot of parenting doesn't work is because you're missing one of these three pillars. I call it like a tripod chair. You, it it sort of works, but not really. If you're missing one part, it just doesn't fly. It's like when you're working with your business coach or your coaching, if they miss that one solid key in what you're teaching them, it's not as successful. It works, not well. But if you want your clients to, or you want to get the most out of your coach, you want to make sure you get every nugget, right? You want to get all those main things that you've got so that when you put it together, you bada bing, bada boom, you're off to the races. Whether that be the goal of having an organized house, of reading fitness goals, of just being a calmer mom that's not yelling and screaming at her kids, because I've, I've done it once or twice, and it's talk about feeling like shite after. It's not good. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't use that word, because I don't know if you guys are in the UK. So sh that shizzle. Try to use my proper words. <laughs> so when you are parenting your kids, I want you to remember a few things. I want you to remember that it's a skill that you're learning. I want you to remember to forgive yourself and be kind to you that I know you're doing the best you can with what you got. Yes, there's other ways and yes, there's more to learn, but welcome to life, there's always something you need to learn. I want you to remember that your kids are not intentionally being told they really are just begging and crying and hoping for those firm, loving boundaries that will help teach you how to not only implement, but to maintain. It's easy to make changes, difficult to maintain them. But I'll teach you how to do it. It's so simple, so simple. But you got to want it. If you want those 10K months, you got to want it. You got to do the work. It's the same thing with your kids. Only the best part about all of this, and I want you to know, is that when you start making the changes to become a more positive parent, a more, and I call it being a proactive parent, 
less work, less fuss, less muss. Sounds like a cleaning commercial. <laughs> but you're, you find that things are just easier. And you create this connection and this, this sense with your kids. So literally you start to get more in tune with them so that when something's going around, you get this little niggle in the back of your head. So you're able to go, mm -hmm. Or you can just do this to your kids in the in the restaurant. You guys are going out. Done. That's what you want for your clients. And that's what I want for you to be able to do with your kids. Because when you do it, you have more time to be a part of their life. But you also get a time to do the things you need to do. That may be that you're exercising, or maybe you want to bake something, and you just, or you just want to read for 20 minutes with a cup of coffee that isn't stone cold. These are all the things that you can have. So when people say, I, I never get my coffee hot, I can't have, oh, this is my favorite. I haven't had a shower in three days. You're joking me. No, 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 no. Mom must take care of mom first and then her children. I have yet to see a child die who is fed and warm and dry and safe in a playpen with a couple of toys, drop dead because mom took a, a, a three and a half minute shower. Okay, so we're not playing that game. I'm done. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. What questions do you have? If you are actually ready to get working with me, which I, I, I hope you are because it's going to make such a difference in your family. It's going to make such a difference with your business because you're going to have more time where you're not constantly trying to messily juggle everything. I can't juggle. Do you have, I can't. Just say I'm in. Drop it in the comments. If you have questions, put them in the comments. I need to know what they are. I want to hear your questions. I want to hear your struggles. I want to hear your challenges. It's what I'm here to do. So I'm going to sign off shortly, um, but I wanted to let you know that it has been an absolute pleasure and such a treat to be here. This is what I do. This is my purpose in my life. It's like when I was a doula, I knew that at that point in my life, I needed to be a doula. And when I was a Lalesh League leader, helping moms learn to breastfeed their children and parent more positively, you know, I did that for three years. That it's all these steps of when I was babysitting at, you know, at 12 years old, when I was working with autistic adolescents, and then I was, you know, becoming a special ed assistant. And then I was a doula and a Lalesh League leader. And then I was, a, you know, a, a professional child giver care, child care provider woo, um, with my own daycare. And then here I am. It's something where it all came together, where now I've got these 30 years of experience that I want to share with you, that I have to share with you so that you can get feeling like I did and like I do as a parent faster. Because time flies, even though some days feel like a year long and some some days feel like a split second long. I want you to be able to actually enjoy your kids. I want you to have a sense of calm, a sense of confidence, a sense of being able to be proactive and step ahead of your kids. Because literally, when you have kids, you literally just have to outthink them. I want you to be the best mom you can be so that when your kids grow, they're going to look back and have like mine do and say, mom, you're the best mom I could have ever had. I would not be where I am without you. And then my children who are going to be having kids soon, I'm hearing the rumblings up, they're going to be parenting like you parented. So if you've got a legacy that you want to end, this is how you do it. Okay. I want to say thank you again. You guys are amazing. Remember, you're doing great. You can work with me. It is never anything to be ashamed about. As a mom, we need to learn the tools and the techniques that make us the best parents we can be that fits best for our family. Okay? All right, you guys. It is Sunday and brunch is starting to be done uh, in my home. I will come back and check on this at any point. Remember, if you are ready to work with me, you get that whole week. You get Voxer support for 11 hours a day. You're getting my Releasing the Mom Guilt series. You're getting a week. Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell you. You get a call with me that lasts about an hour. So if your kids are hanging off your ears or off your shoulders, don't worry. I'm bomb proof. You get all that for $197 US. Hello. And I have this immense program coming up that I'm launching on my birthday, May the 15th. But let's get you guys in on a taste tester so you can see the incredible difference. Because basically, 100% of my moms that have gone through my taste tester have gone on to work with me for at least a month. This new program is 
six weeks and it has got triple the amount of stuff in there. It's incredible. All right. Have an amazing Sunday. Hug your kids. Better yet, if they're driving you crazy, take them outside for a good pedal jump. And if they don't want to wear their boots, they get wet feet. All right. Have a great day. Love you guys. It's been amazing. Take care. Drop your questions and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>